You might know the DJI Mini 3 Pro just came out and honestly the drone looks absolutely amazing but the price point of the drone kind of sets it between two worlds in my opinion. You're getting the features that you can really use as a professional drone in a lot of senses. So I'm wondering if the Mini 2 is still the best option for beginners and for someone who's on a budget because the new Mini 3 Pro comes in at like $1,200 if you want the whole fly more combo and the extra batteries and everything. And that's just a lot of money for someone to spend on something that they maybe don't know how to use and don't know if they're gonna get into. But I'm gonna head out now and we're gonna go to a nice spot and take a few drone photos and see how they turn out. I wanna give you a few tips of drone photography. So I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of your DJI Mini 2. Okay, so the first tip that I have for you is to shoot at the right time of day. And yes, it's important to get sunrise sometimes, but sunrise is kind of already happening right now. For me, shooting drone photography, I love to shoot at golden hour. When you're up in the air, when the light is spilling across the landscape, it creates long shadows. And for me, I always find that that creates a really dynamic look. So tip number one is just shoot at the right time. Let's go shoot right now because it's looking like it's gonna be a perfect time. Let's go. I also just uh, got these new blades on my Mavic Mini and they're uh, Mastercraft and they're supposed to be a lot quieter, which is super nice on a morning like this. Um, but I'm, I'm a little bit worried about uh, the way that they will stay on because if they all of a sudden come off when it's above the river valley, that would not be great. Time to fly. So much quieter than the old propellers. Hello, hello. Normally it would be golden hour right now, but you can kind of see there's just this gray dullness over the sky. Definitely a downer. So my second point that I actually want to talk about is composition. It's one of the things you should definitely learn about if you're into videography, if you're into photography. You probably know a thing or two about composition and that's just, it's so crucial when you're talking about drone photography you should be thinking about what you're looking at in your image, what you're trying to draw attention to, and how you're gonna keep someone's attention that's looking at your photo. So in this case, I think the Edmonton skyline looks really nice. I love in Edmonton the contrast between nature and city and how it plays together so seamlessly. Like you can see even in this photo, the river valley is running right through downtown, there's bridges going over it, there's paths you can see. And so I kind of want to highlight that difference, but also the river valley right there makes a perfect leading line right towards the city. Yeah, I love that composition. I've used it before in a lot of my other photos. So tip number two is to think about composition. Think about where you're drawing attention to in your photo and how you're going to lead the viewer to look at what you want them to look at. And this leads me to point number three. And point number three is going to be my entire editing process. But part of that you have to keep in mind when you're shooting. The DJI Mini and the Mini 2 both have very small sensors. So the resolution on them isn't that great straight out of camera. So if I were to do this and just take a photo just like that, the photo would be okay, but the resolution would be pretty low. And the dynamic range of the image is not great. So First, we're gonna cover the high dynamic range. We wanna get the most out of our image. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take three different photos. One of them is gonna be at an overexposed, at about plus one. 
And what that's gonna do is give you details in your shadows. And then you're gonna take one right at about zero. And that will give you a lot of your mid-range detail. And then we'll go down here and we'll try and get some of that detail in, in the highlights, in the clouds. Um, you can see they're pretty bright. So then we have three images and we'll stitch them together in post. But that doesn't solve the issue of your resolution. If you wanna have higher, crispier photos out of your DJI Mini or Mini 2, you actually wanna take three photos and stitch them together vertically or horizontally as well. So basically what you're doing here is taking a panoramic picture and you can stitch them together in post. Now, as I just said, we're also taking HDR photos. So first we're gonna take three photos at a certain exposure and then we're gonna take two more sets of three photos in different angles. So you can see I will not touch the sticks at all. I won't go up and down. All I'm gonna do is tilt the camera downwards and you wanna give Lightroom something to work with so you don't wanna go a full frame downwards. You need to have them overlap a little bit and I like to overlap quite a bit. All right, so I'm gonna go one further down here and usually by the bottom of the frame like this, some of it's gonna get distorted so that's why um, it's always good to have a little bit more than a little bit less. So we took nine images all together, an overexposed, a middle exposure, and an underexposed image at three different angles in the same position. I'm gonna take the drone down now. I think I got what I need, and we'll take it into post to continue with tip three in how editing can make your DJI Mini 2 get you some killer drone shots. There we go. made it here to the office. A little bit of a setup here going on. All right, so we're gonna go through my three steps to editing right here. First, I'm gonna go through, and you can see, as I go through these photos, the image barely moves. Now, the drone does move a little bit in the sky, but Lightroom is smart enough to be able to pick out what is the same in each image. So select them all with Shift, right-click, Photo Merge, and these are your three options. You can click HDR and you can see the image that it creates for you is already so much better. So you can choose auto settings on or off. I usually leave them on just because it generally brings up the shadows, brings down the highlights. I'll go in and fine tune at the end. When you click merge, it takes a second, but as you can see, this image is already so much better. You don't have to do any editing and it already looks um, a million times better. Come over to here, you're gonna do the same thing to the other three images you took at that same position with your drone. So photo merge, HDR, and we'll do that one more time because we took three photos all together, HDR. So what we wanna do is stitch all three of these images together, and then you're gonna go same thing, photo merge, but instead of clicking HDR, you're gonna click panorama. And I don't think I'll do auto settings for this one, click merge and just like that you have a pretty solid image right there so even that is going to elevate your images to another level you can see there's a lot more detail in it because it's taking three different images and stitching them together so this is where it's really subjective you can color grade your images however you like i'll go through how i do mine generally it's a bit dark so i'm bringing up some of the exposure yeah the highlights do need to come down quite a bit to be able to see that sky Taking out the clarity can really bloom the highlights a little bit, almost like a mist filter, a little bit grainy. And that's, again, that's what happens with these drones. Um, but I can take some noise reduction on there. And yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good overall for exposure. Usually I lean my blues towards teal a little bit. I lean my yellows towards orange. So here it really is just subjective. You just wanna play around what you think might look best. Now this is a final little touch that I think is really important. It's one of the main reasons to shoot at golden hour. 
So as you can see, the sun is right behind these clouds here and it's, it's fading across the image in a vertical direction to down here, where down here is probably the darkest part of the image. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually add a filter going the opposite way. And I'm just gonna bring down the exposure a little bit. And as you can see, that creates some shadow and some depth. And I also like to turn the temperature a little bit cooler. Okay, the second thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a new mask. And this one, I'm gonna create a radial mask right around the sun to just come across the entire image. I want, I want the sun to be really touching those rooftops. And what I do is basically just bring up the exposure a little bit there. And then you can even turn the temperature a little bit warmer because again, this is golden hour. It is really starting to warm up the skyline. There we go. And sometimes I'll add in a little bit of pink, especially around sunrise. Um, but this one is a little bit too late for that. So there are all my secrets on drone photography. A lot of people are surprised to find out that I just have a Mavic Mini. This drone you can get for, I think, 500 bucks Canadian right now, which is a great deal. So I highly recommend if you don't have the money to buy the newest drone, pick up an old drone. You can get great photos out of it. You can get great videos too. I have another video on my channel that's just a reel of some of my work with this drone and you can check that out. So that's all for this video. I'm gonna post this on Instagram right now and we will see you in the next video.